Today I'm going to talk about checking belts and hoses in your Mustang. Today I'm in my 2013 Mustang GT Premium with a 5 liter engine. But this information will be helpful for any 2005 to 2014 Ford Mustang with either a V6 or V8 engine. I'm doing these checks as part of my engine oil change to ensure the checks are done periodically. They are part of my oil change series. I have many other videos showing general automotive work, modifications, and tips. If you find this video helpful, consider subscribing and watching the other videos. To subscribe, just click the Styles Automotive icon in the lower right of the screen. Let's get started with the underhood belts and hoses inspection. You can see from the top of the engine, it's hard to see the front of the engine with the cold air inlet tube in the way and with the overflow tank, the coolant overflow tank in the way. You can see back behind them, but there's very little room. You can see more from the bottom and I'll show you that in a minute. You can see more hoses with the engine cover removed. So we're going to remove this engine cover and look at the hoses underneath there. To remove the engine cover, just pull up on it. It snaps in place in several places. It just snaps into rubber grommets. So once I get this off, I'll show you the trick to it. But once you get it over, you can see I'm getting it over these parts in the front here. On the overflow tube here on the coolant and then on the cold air induction, I'm pulling it up over the top of that. But I'll show you where these, um, the trick is here once I get it off of here. So this is the trick to it. Here's how it mounts. It has these four places here that push into the rubber grommets. There's two on each side. And what you have to do is line those up. So here's the rubber grommets. Here's the front ones right here one on each side and then the back ones here what you have to do is bring that stud from the rubber grommets right up along right up along here along your intake runners with the engine cover removed you can see why I had you remove the engine cover we're going to talk about hoses in just a minute after we talk about belts but if you're doing this as part of my oil change series and you're following my instructions for cleaning the air cleaner, mass airflow sensor, and then the throttle body. Once you take this cold air tube off, you can see a lot more of the radiator hoses down in the front of the engine, and you can see the top of the belts. So that is the time to do the belts and hoses inspection is when you have the throttle body off. If you choose not to do that cleaning and that service on your cold air tube, then you got to just get down in and, and attempt to to see the best you can from the top of the engine in front of the engine to try to determine the state of your belts and hoses all right let's move to underneath the car if you're doing this belts and hoses inspection as part of your oil change you're already going to remove this engine access underneath the car there's three eight millimeter head size bolts that you have to remove and my cover even says 
that it's torqued to nine Newton meters. So when you put those bolts back in and it has an arrow that points to it, each of those bolts, which is kind of convenient. Here's the right side of the car. I'm gonna take those off. You can't see a tremendous amount under here, but you get better access to the air conditioning belt. So there's two belts on the five liter. There's the main serpentine accessory drive belt, and then there's a single belt that drives the AC compressor. And you can get a better view from under here for the AC compressor. You can also see the AC lines under here. And then from the left side of the car, near the oil filter, on my car with the track package, I have an oil cooler. So I have an engine oil cooler, and you can see the two engine oil cooler lines over here on this side. They loop up and around the oil filter, and then I have that extended base on my oil filter. Well, like I said during the cleaning of the throttle body video, the time to inspect your belts and hoses is when you have the intake system apart, when you have the coiled air intake tube off, and you're cleaning the throttle body, you're cleaning your air filter and your mass airflow sensor. That's the time to inspect your belts and hoses. You get a little more access from the top. The work that a modern serpentine belt is made to perform is significant. The Mustang accessory drive belt has a hard life and you depend on it for your engine to run. It turns the water pump to ensure adequate engine cooling. It turns the alternator without which you'll have a short battery life and then no fuel pump or spark in your cylinder. And on the 2005 through 2011 Mustang, it turns the power steering pump, which you can live without for a short period of time if you work out regularly, that is. For those of us that don't work out as much as we'd like, driving a car without the power steering is probably unsafe. In other words, your main serpentine belt is very important. My car also has a second belt, which turns the AC compressor. So make sure you inspect all of your belts. Belts should be inspected once a month at a minimum or with every oil change. At least that's what the belt manufacturer recommends that they get inspected every month. Anyway, I'm saying to inspect them at every oil change. Let's talk about what to look for on a worn belt. Symptoms of a worn belt can include frayed, worn, glazed, or cracking of the belt. Belt manufacturers say belts should be replaced approximately every 50,000 miles or if there are 10 or more cracks in one inch section of the belt. Ford recommends that the belts be replaced at 150,000 miles if it has not been replaced in the last 100,000 miles. Make sure you let the engine cool before inspecting the belts and hoses. Have a good light to visibly look at the belts and physically touch them. Twist the serpentine belt to look for separating layers, cracks, or missing chunks on the grooves or on the underside or on the inside of the belt. Take a look at this slide. This is normal belt wear. You can see the cracking on the inside ribs of the belt. This is when the belt should be replaced under normal use. I'd never let a belt go looking any worse than this. Let me show you a few other examples. Here's where the ribs are starting to separate. So unless the belt breaks, this is what occurs next from heat and use. If the back of the belt is wearing, like in this case where you can see the rib running down it, this is not normal, it's rubbing on something and you need to look for whatever it's rubbing on. This belt should also be replaced, but you also need to fix whatever was causing the problem. Belts that are glazed or oily, so if the belt's not tight, improper tension, or if you get oil on the belt, this will occur. So you need to fix whatever the problem is, whatever is causing the oily situation, and then replace the belt. 
While you're down in the front of the engine checking your belts, take a look at the idler pulley and tensioner pulleys. Put your fingers on them and check for any front and back movement. A little movement is okay. These are hard to determine if there's a problem with the belt on and the tension is on the pulley. If you suspect a pulley is bad, use a half inch drive breaker bar on the tensioner and remove the belt. Always check them or replace them when you replace the belt. Belt manufacturers like Gates recommends you replace all of them when you replace the belt. Gates even makes a kit like this one. This one is for the F-150. It comes with the, a new belt, a new tensioner, and all the pulleys that you need. The F-150 has two of the outside idler bolts, the smooth ones, and one of the inside grooved pulleys. And this, comes, this kit comes with everything you need to replace both the belt and all the pulleys. It's a nice little kit. Saves a little money too. When these pulleys go bad, they generally make a high pitch whine. It's kind of like a blower whine or a, like the transmission is running dry or something when these start to fail. Remember when you're down in the front of the engine, make sure you check belts and hoses. So check for coolant leaks, any noticeable engine oil in the front of the engine. So let me tell you a war story about belts before we move on to hoses. In my 98 Mustang Cobra with a 4.6 liter four valve per cylinder engine, it had about 130,000 miles on it. And uh, I knew that the drive belt hadn't been replaced. It has a single serpentine belt on it. And it looks similar to the belt that I showed you in the example with cracked ribs. And I thought, well, it doesn't look too bad, so I'm going to let it go. So I bought a, a new serpentine belt to keep in the trunk, and I just let it go. And uh, at about 160,000 miles, when I was doing a, a Michigan turnaround, a Michigan left, where you have to do a U-turn and then go back to the driveway where I work, I usually spin the rear tires a little bit to get it to oversteer. And uh, it's just... Kind of a fun thing to do before I uh, end my drive and go into work and uh, when I did that as the engine revved a little higher than normal the belt let loose and of course it disintegrated I know just a kind of a silly experiment but sometimes car guys do those kind of things if you depend on your belt though or your hoses you need to do regular maintenance on them and uh, don't do what I did and let them go. You know, I kept a spare in the trunk and it was easy for me to replace on that particular engine. On this five liter, it's a little harder to get to. So I really wouldn't want to do it to, at work in dress pants unless I really had to. So I do regular maintenance on this engine and you don't want to be on uh, Woodward doing uh, the dream cruise and have one of your belts or hoses go. So you want to make sure you can rely on your coolant system or any of your hose systems under the hood. So on that note, let's move on to hoses. Ford doesn't mention coolant hoses in the replacement schedule, but says to inspect them with each oil change. Hose manufacturers recommend that all hoses be replaced at least every four years or when one fails, replace them all. So for hoses, Look for swelling, softness, or cracking in the coolant and heater hoses. Most vehicles have two radiator hoses and several heater hoses. However, on your Mustang, some of the hoses are not visible and can be easily overlooked, so take time to locate them. Pay particular attention to the upper radiator hose. It takes the most engine heat and requires replacement the most frequently. Squeeze the hoses with your thumb and forefinger near the clamps and feel for soft and mushy spots. These are the heater hoses on my five liter. Notice how they're routed underneath that fancy engine cover. A good hose will have a firm yet pliant feel. Look at the ends of the hose and check for small leaks. This is an indication of a loose hose clamp 
or the hose is becoming brittle and having a problem sealing. Inspect the vacuum hoses and lines and look for cracks and kinks. Inspect fuel lines and look for signs of problems and leaks. If you smell gas under the hood, look for leaks and make sure you repair them. That's a potential fire hazard. Ensure all mounting locations for hoses and lines are tight and on the original OEM mounting locations. So for an easy example, look how this heater hose is mounted here to the top of the engine. It's got it's cradled in this mount. Make sure all those mounts are still serviceable. Or look at this fuel line that comes towards the back of the engine. It has this mount right here. Make sure those are all in place to protect all of your hoses. Also, look at this example of this vacuum hose. This PCV line, it's been molded and look how it's already got kind of a kink to it. Notice here how it makes a turn. It's been heated and kinked. So it looks like it's got a kind of a kink here and a kink here. Those are potential kink spots. There's three spots there. So make sure you're checking those kind of things on your lines. And with that engine cover off, you can see the heater lines going into the heater core. Make sure you check those fittings to see if they're leaking. Just take your time. Either work from the firewall around counterclockwise or from firewall around clockwise, checking each of the hoses as you go. Or you can focus on just one system at a time. Look at the fuel lines, look at the coolant lines, then look at the vacuum lines. Also, while you're under here doing this, this is a great time to check wiring harnesses. So look at the wiring harnesses and make sure they're all still mounted in the mounting locations. Make sure all the electrical tape looks good. Look at the end of each of the harnesses. Let me see if I can find a quick example. If you look at the end of the wiring harness, sometimes uh, electrical tape will come unwrapped so cut that off and re-electrical tape the end of your harnesses here's a good example right here see how the electrical tape is coming off the end of this one that one needs to be redone again just take your time and be thorough check all your belts and hoses that concludes the video if you found it helpful let me know in the comments Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up.